So this video is going to be a little bit more about the nuclear level diagrams and how we can use those to figure out what types of radiation we would see from nuclear decays. And the main example we're going to be looking at is for scanium-44 and the metastable isotope or metastable uh, isomer of that nuclide. And so I want you to take note of some of the information that you see here for this metastable isomer. And we're going to see some of this information pop up when we look at the level diagram. So this level diagram is relatively uncomplicated. What we have here is we have the half-life of this metastable state, the 58.6 hours. We have the spin and parity of this particular isomer. We have the energy of the isomer. So this is already an excited state of the scanium 44 nuclide. So this 271.13, that's how much extra energy this isomeric state has compared to the ground state of scanium 44. We have the Q value for the electron capture of this metastable state decay. And we have a percentage here. So this metastable isomer of scanium 44 only decays through electron capture 1.2% of the time. We can see it only has one specific decay to one specific nuclear state of its daughter product, the calcium 44. When you get into nuclear structure, you'll think a little bit more about this, but just kind of to point it out, so that you start making the association here. Notice that the spin and parity of the parent and the daughter are the same. So there's only one decay here that we have to worry about to the levels in this diagram. Every single electron capture is going to come up to this 3,285 keV excited isomeric state of calcium 44. All of these states, notice, have very short lifetimes. And all of these states are going to decay in a chain from one level to the next. And the energy difference between each of these states is the energy of the gamma ray that we see coming off from each of these decays. So Every time a metastable scanium-44 decays through electron capture, we would expect to see all three of these gamma ray energies. And the final comment on this level diagram is to make note that because the metastable state only decays through electron capture 1.2% of the time, the other 98.8% of the time the metastable state of this scandium is going to decay to the ground state of the scandium 44 by emitting a gamma ray that matches the energy difference between those two nuclear levels. So nearly every single decay of this scandium 44 is going to end up emitting a 271.13 keV gamma ray, only 1.2% of the decays of that metastable state will not emit that gamma ray. And those 1.2% that do not emit the 271.13 will emit the other three gamma ray energies shown on this level diagram. This is the decay diagram and energy level diagram for scanium 44 from the ground state decaying to the calcium 44. This is a little, little different from what it looked like for the uh, metastable state. Again, just a note for the future, notice that the spin and parity of this ground state happened to ma match the spin and parity of all of these other energy levels for the calcium 44, and that we do not see a decay here to the ground state 
because of that spin and parity. And you'll learn more about that when you cover the nuclear structure. We again have the half-life here for this ground state. We have the Q value for the electron capture decay from the ground state. We have now different possibilities for where those decays will go in the daughter, in terms of the daughter's energy levels. We see that the bulk of the electron captures, almost 99% of them will go to this energy level. Only 1% go to this energy level and less than 1% go to this energy level. Because almost 99% of the decays from the ground state, which remember is over 98% of the decays from the metastable state, so this is still a very large number, because so many of them pass through this energy level, the overall decay from the ground state we nearly see every single decay associated with one of these gamma rays. Notice this is slightly different in terms of the energy from the energy of the gamma ray from the metastable state, but it's so close that we're not going to be able to resolve them from each other in the gamma spectra. Because we do have these other electron capture decays going to this 3,301.3 keV state, and this other 2,600 keV energy state, we still have all these other decays that can come from those energy levels. But notice that all of those intensities are less than 1%. So we would expect them to be pretty small. The 1499.43, since it is so close to 1% out of all of these, is probably the only one I would worry about trying to show on a uh, gamma spectrum diagram. The other thing that's going on here is that we typically do not calibrate our gamma spectrum, at least in the teaching labs. We do not typically calibrate them for energies higher than 1500 keV. And so the 2600, the 3300 may not even be on the scale of our axes, may not even be within our domain for the energies that we have calibrated our detector for. So from this energy level diagram, what you can see is you can see the percentage or the intensity of the decays that are associated with this particular gamma ray energy. And then this helps you know what kinds of energies to see from your particles. Now, for something like electron capture, you're not going to see another particle come out from that other than the neutrinos. And th that might be a special topic talk but neutrinos are extremely unlikely to interact with matter. And so neutrino detectors, again, are really a topic for a special, uh, special lecture or a guest lecture from someone working with neutrino observations. Um, so from electron capture, if you're lucky enough where the decay goes to an excited isomer of the daughter nuclide, then you might see gamma ray energies associated with that decay. Finally, even with more complicated level diagrams like this for the decay, alpha decay of americium 241, you can still look on this diagram. You can still identify based off of the non bolded number in the front what the intensity will be for the gamma ray emission. And from this level diagram, you could see that you would expect to see a good number of 59.5 keV gamma rays from the alpha decay of americium-241. The other thing you can notice is that as you look at all of these other intensity numbers, all of these other intensity numbers, many of them have exponents of times 10 to the negative fifth. Um, none of these are as close to the intensity of this 36 percentage or 36 relative intensity for this 59.5 keV gamma ray. The closest one to it is probably this 2.41 relative intensity at this 26.3 keV. And that's the reason why when you look at the spectrum, the 59.54 is so high. And here's this 26.3, okay. 
some of those other KEVs on the spectrum here are probably associated with the backscatter and the X-rays, characteristic X-rays coming from the Shealy. The final comment is that even though these diagrams are usually used or often used to determine the gamma ray energies, because we have the energies of the levels, which alpha decays take us to in the daughter, and because we have the percentages of those decays, we can use these energies like this 102.96, subtract those from our Q value for alpha decay, and then correct those Q values for those decays to those specific energy levels to determine what energy we would observe for our alpha particle. So notice that the 5,637.8, if we subtract about 103 from that, that would give us about 5,534.8, 5,534 5,534.8. And if you look on the alpha spectrum, then you, then you do not actually see an alpha particle at 5,534 keV. You do have to correct that for the mass of the daughter and the mass of the parent. And to determine how much energy stays with the alpha particle. And when you do that correction then, you will notice that the alpha particle decay to that energy level would be associated with this 5.443 MeV. And so you could work through to match each of these peaks up to each of those decays associated with the energy level diagram. But on the energy level diagram, you can also look to see which ones are the biggest percentages and the 85.2, the 12.8, this 1.4, these are gonna be some of our most intense alpha decay peaks.